Warning, cheaters may contain adult themes and strong language. Parents are cautioned that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. And what you see is two people having sex. I know this is the hardest thing to have to watch two freaking years with somebody. Come on, come on, come on. From Cheaters surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Just like he's just trying to keep a big secret from me. I just can't go on anymore. I need to know the truth. I don't like being the one that has to show you this. Oh. I asked her about his, and she said nothing's going on. Do you want to confront him? Oh, yeah. Take me there. Yeah, I got him. Hey, go. Go. Get right. up, get up. Get up. Get up. Whoa, whoa. This is, like, not how this is supposed Whatever, to work. Just go. Dog. Go with him. I love you. I'm so sorry. Real Reality Television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Greetings, I'm Joey Greco. Welcome to this exciting installment of Cheaters. Meet Alfredo Ramirez, a devoted young man troubled over his longtime girlfriend's recent apathy. Following countless attempts at a frank discussion, Alfredo considers Cheaters as a last resort. Alfredo Freddy Ramirez, age 30. A body artist with the impression that his girlfriend may be getting another man's name tattooed on her heart. Me and Amy met at a, at a party, like a house party. Um, some friends of mine knew about a party, went over there and we hung out and I met her there, we started hanging out. Uh, dated for about a year, just party together and stuff and then we moved in together. Compared to my, to, to my old relationships, um, I got a lot more time involved, you know, I've never actually lived with a girlfriend. Uh, I've just been kind of, I've never really been this serious. I guess the things that are uh, making me suspicious are like she's, she's coming in late, later than usual. Uh, all of a sudden she has meetings she's got to go to and stuff and I mean that was never happening before. Maybe, yeah, maybe she's, she's getting promotions and stuff but, uh, you know, it's, it's just, just weird the way she's coming at me. I mean going out of town would be kind of cool, you know what I'm saying, I'd like to, you know, hear about it. You know, maybe she heard some good things about her job and stuff, you know. And you know, she should share that with me, but you know, like I said, it's really vague. You know, maybe what she's looking for, she's, she wants to go in another direction. I don't know, maybe she met a, a, you know, some rich lawyer guy, you know what I'm saying, who dresses real nice. But, uh, you know, either way, you know, she just needs to let me know. I pride myself on, as, on being somebody who, you know, has a pretty good uh, intuition as to what's going on and stuff. So I don't, you know, I, I, I can deal with it. You know what I'm saying? But just don't lie to me. I know something's going on, man. I mean, I don't know what exactly it is, but I know there's something going on. Now, if I'm wrong, you know, then, you know, I guess I'm, you know, I guess that was stupid of me, you know what I'm saying? And, and I got some issues to look at. But if I'm right, you know, and yeah, I, ain't, I got no love for her, you know? So I just want to find out right now before, you know, we stay together any longer. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Amy Marquino, age 31. A secretary suspected of taking dictation from someone other than her boyfriend. Investigation day one. With incredible ease, cheaters sleuths snag suspect Marquino on the very first night of the investigation. With Freddie at work, Marquino comes out of their home and heads off in her car. Unaware that cheaters watchdogs are close on her tail, investigators pursue the suspect to a local IHOP, where she suspiciously hooks up with an unknown male companion. First, the nature of the relationship is unclear. But it doesn't take a genius to figure out that these two are up to no good, as the suspect kisses her companion in public. 
After settling up the bill, the unknown male companion walks his lady out to the car, touching her provocatively, as if to see just how much he can get away with. But the investigation comes to a halt when the suspect gives her companion a friendly hug goodnight and sends him on his way. Although denied on this night, he still seems quite pleased with the evening's developments. Investigation Day 7. After a week-long hiatus, Cheater's hounds once again pick up the suspect's trail as she leaves the residence while Freddy is away at work. Investigators pursue the suspect down the dark streets for quite some time before she finally pulls up to a rather surprising location, an empty church parking lot. But there are no worship services being offered on this night, at this hour, and the suspect is in no mood to pray. And soon after, when her male companion saddles up beside her in his dark black car, she does submit to a supplication of another kind. After a kissing session, the two lovebirds hop into the suspect's vehicle and have a late night romp on holy ground. Meanwhile, Freddy gets the runaround from Marquino. Hi, sweetie. Hey, what's up? Good to see you from work. Oh, really? How was your day? It was okay. Good. It's long. Way to relax. Okay. How are you getting off tonight? Um, late, 12. 12? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll be right here. Okay. See you later. Bye. Bye. When they emerge from the vehicle 20 minutes later, the suspect seems quite nonchalant about the whole affair, gulping down a large bottle of icy spring water to cool off her libido. The two then bid goodnight and bring a welcome end to their perverted rendezvous. Investigation Day 9. With Freddy working the night shift, Marquino and her male companion up the ante when the emboldened man has the nerve to pick her up at Freddy's own home. After a spirited kiss in front of the neighbors, the two ramble away in the male companion's vehicle, and Cheater's cameras roll on in hot pursuit. The two pull into a low-budget hideaway motel, undoubtedly with the intention of taking their liaison to the next level. Seemingly sensing that his big moment is at hand, the male companion confidently strides into the motel lobby, touting his fashionable headgear for his dark-haired vixen. After negotiating with the motel clerk for a few minutes, the two then head off to a private room where there can be little question as to their activities. The five hours spent inside are a dead giveaway that infidelity is afoot. And Cheater's PIs decide it's time to head back to headquarters and prepare their report for Freddy Ramirez. After the break, the confrontation. Having secured undeniable proof in the case, Cheaters contacts Alfredo to report on the torrid details. Ready for resolution in the matter, Alfredo prepares to study the evidence. When we were riding over here, you were feeling a little apprehensive, edgy. Mm -hmm. I still do, man. You've seen this program. Yeah. You, you see what happens when you come out here with me. Mm -hmm. What I have to show you isn't any good news, but I want to bring you up to speed on what Amy's been doing while you've been at work. On this day of investigation, our detectives followed her. On this night, I believe, this was the night she said she was going shopping, when in fact we followed her to a local restaurant. One thing that we found out about Amy, she she wasn't inclined to hide anything. Here's a guy I want to see if you recognize. Well, that's the back of his head. There she is, kissing him. The first day of investigation, this is what we get. Yeah, and I knew it. I knew it. I know this is the hardest thing to have to watch two freaking years with somebody that, that I have to show you that. On this day of investigation, she made no bones about it. This is a little more difficult because the reality of what's about to happen is just a cold slap in the face. Same guy pulls up. I don't know why they met at a church parking lot. They get in her car, and the sad part is, is they get back in the back seat of her car. The picture isn't really good here, but the descriptions from my detective and what you see is two people having sex. She pulls her dress up and gets out. There's no 
smokes a cigarette very casually like nothing's happened. We stayed on her one more day. This guy has the nerve to come over to your house. Do what? And pick her up. There he goes. Right. Hugging her outside of your house. Did he go inside? He didn't go inside. Mm -hmm. And here's the, the crowning blow. He takes her to a real high class motel. The facts are, while we brought you to this location, our detective is on him. We have three detectives on him, and they were at a little bar down the street here. They've left the bar, they're still on him. As soon as they, they land in a location, then we can catch him. Do you want to talk to her about yeah, it? Yeah. You want to talk Please. to this guy? Yeah. Uh, him, I'm not so worried about him. You know what I'm saying? He, you know, he had the respect not to step into my house. Uh, she's the one spreading her legs, you know what I'm saying? Hey, all right, we're done. We're loading up. Just tell me where you're at, and we'll come. OK, they're in the beer store. I got you, I got you. OK, buddy, let's go. Stay on with me. All right. all right, we are in position and ready to go. When they come out, we're on them. OK, they're coming out. Come on, buddy. What are you doing? What's up, What's up, boo? What's up? What's up? What you want to do? Hey, what's up? What is it? Whatever, dude, what you talking about? Stop. 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 What's up? No, 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 no. You know who he is, buddy? Hey, hey no, George. no, George. no. George. 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 No. No. George. No. 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 Come on, boo. Come on. No. Freddy, no. Come on, Freddy, no. Freddy, no. Freddy, no. Come on, no. No. What are you doing? Are you stupid? No. Get up out of my business, dog. Get up. Get up out. Come here. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Hey, hey, guys, hey. What's up, bro? Hey. It's whatever, dog. Come on. I always was. Come here. I swear to God. Come on, wait, I'm a scene. Listen, do you want to talk to me or not? Stop. Stop. See what, what, what Amy, you for? see what you've caused? Are you no. proud of yourself? No, I'm not proud of myself. I'm sorry. I thought I you was going to be at the mall today. I'm just, listen to me. We need to talk just for a second, okay? <laughs> Get him back. You know what? It's just like, you're never home. You're never home at night. You work Because I'm trying 12. to make some money, I man. I understand that. But you know what? What about me? I sit home and just do nothing and wait on you. I always tell all you can come to the shop. You can come to the shop. Come to the shop. Yeah. So I can watch you tattoo all kinds of girls. Why have you, know, you been lying to him? Why do you just lie? Why don't you just be honest with him? You Step know, up. You, Des, you're right. I should have been honest, and I'm sorry it turned out this way, but I didn't mean to hurt you, and I didn't want to hurt you. You didn't hurt me. You hurt yourself. Well, you, you know. You hurt yourself. I know you may think that, You done that, lost but... out. I'm just going to do the same thing to you, dog. Whatever, dog. You I'm, know what I'm saying? I'm sorry you had to see all that. <laughs> I'm glad I did. Well, I'm really glad you did, too. So what you going to do now? Well, I'll just have to make arrangements and move my stuff out of the well, house. Move your stuff out. It's going to be out there when you get there. Coming up, the conclusion. Well, I'll just have to make arrangements and move my stuff out of well, the house. Move your stuff out. It's going to be out there when you get there. Did you not care? Do you not love him? Two years, you're just gonna go, okay, you know, whatever. I, so I, I love him, but I'm just not, I'm not in love with him anymore. And I, you know, it's just. So were you ever gonna tell him or just keep using him? I was gonna tell him. I'm sorry that it had to turn out this way, but I'm just, I'm glad you know now, but I'm so, I'm sorry. Whatever. This is the guy you wanna be with? Yeah. Good, I'm glad y'all deserve each other. You should be ashamed of yourself. You know what? Uh, just lying to him, deceiving him, going to dinner. I'm going shopping at the mall. What's he expecting? Were well, you gonna run by the mall, pick him up some gifts, so when he comes back? So what'd you uh, give me today when you went to the mall? Some... <laughs> Funny. I'm sorry. Yeah, you are. I'm really sorry. Whatever. Trust me, I got, I got, I got better to do. I know you do. Yeah, you see, you see who comes. Know. You know, you see what comes in, the, in and out of the shop every day. I do, and they're all skanky yeah. too. Yeah. So I'm always worried about, you know, gonna what's what's going to happen next. Get out of the shop, please. You know, it's lonely. I know, at home you call, how are you going to call somebody skanky? I'm not skanky. <laughs> what you know, is, what is this church parking lot stuff? What is uh, that? Yeah. Having sex in a parking lot? Well, for God's sakes, it was a church parking lot. 
I had to show him that. I'm really sorry you had to find out this way. That's cool. Man. I'm almost savage. I'm leaving. I hear you, folks. I'll see you. I'll be leaving, too. Well, are you, are you not are you working tonight or what? I need to come by the house. I'm, I'm always working. Stuff. Trust I know me, I'm going to work double time You're now. You're always working. That's the problem. Whatever. That's the problem. Go ahead and go here, man. You ain't come with me. You should think about how you treat people in a relationship. This is what I'm going to be treating them. I see. I've been seeing you. I don't know, buddy. Let's get you out of here. <clears throat> That's just crazy. After the confrontation, Alfredo tries to pick up the pieces. At the end of the show, Cheaters announces Alfredo's new take on love. But first, Cheaters presents Eric Osborne. Eric appeared on the show when discovered two-timing his girlfriend, Paige. Eric returns to dispel what he claims is a biased report on his character. Eric Osborne, age 25. Eric describes the invasion of privacy he suffered at the hands of his girlfriend, Paige. The first thing I thought was, you know, cops or something, you know, somebody's out in the park later on at night, but you know, I mean, I get out, you know, like I said, I see Paige, and I mean, I, I kind of knew then, I was like, you, you gotta be kidding me. Eric, get you at a bad time? Can you the car? Hey, this isn't what you think it is, right? It's not what I think. What is it? It's gonna break up. Another night out, guys. She could have just been a person and been like, you know, I think you're doing this and this. I mean, I don't know why she had to, you know, get people sneaking around behind, my, you know, my back and stuff for it. It, I, it just seemed kind of uh, <clears throat> like she went too far, you know. I mean, I thought she was a different person, but you know, she, uh, I don't know. She, I guess she had a problem with me. How can you do this? You don't even have anything to say. <laughs> out of here talking without her clothes on. Yeah, you know what? I talk like that all the time, don't I? Just without my clothes on? Sure. <laughs> you know, I got to kind of figure out who Paige was as a person, you know. And after, you know, a while, I, I was planning on breaking up with her. You know, I had uh, I told Danielle that I was going to, which I, I wasn't, I guess, exactly broken up with her by the time we got found. But, uh, you know, she just, she wouldn't. She's just one of my type of person, I guess. Do you know that he's been in rehab? No, I did not. He's, he's gone through a lot, you know? And we've well, had a really, no. He's failed to tell me all this. I mean, he even took me to his parents' house. He took you to his parents' house? Yeah. Look, I still love you. I just, you're no, not, you're not my. Do not say that to me. Do not say those words to me again. Would you expect someone that loved you to act that way? Is there an, is there? Say, you want to get back in the car? We'll be glad to leave, because I'm, I'm done. Uh -huh. Are you sorry, sorry at all? you had to find out this way. Get back to whatever you're doing, okay? Well, hopefully, uh, you know, me and Daniel get married and raise our family. Maybe have another kid when more money comes in. Uh, there's this, I mean, there's, it's, it's open, you know? I mean, as long as I don't mess anything up, which I really don't plan on doing, then I'll be, uh, I'll be set. Following the explosive confrontation, Alfredo Ramirez made it very clear that he will not be taken advantage of. He claimed that Ms. Marquino broke his heart so badly that it might take quite a long time for him to love again. But after a few weeks of being single, Mr. Ramirez experienced an epiphany of sorts and realized that the key to inner peace lies in self-sufficiency. Amy Marquino replied only that life is too short to dwell upon the past and had no interest in discussing the failure of her relationship.
She did, however, state that she wishes nothing but the best for Mr. Ramirez and hopes that he'll simply move on with his life. As for her male companion, he emphatically declined to speak with Cheater's producers at this time.